So uh, in the previous class, we we learned um, how the highlighter language code is translated into machine code, and then how this translated machine code is stored in memory. Right? Then so as I mentioned, so you can say that these functions are also uh, some kind of instant data, right? Because you can represent instructions using digital signal uh, like this, okay? So as you can see, this is the uh, after decimal format, but I mentioned that we frequently use after decimal format because the binary format, if we use binary format, then it will be very long, okay? So that's why we frequently use uh, hexadecimal format to represent digital data, okay? So actually, in the memory, uh, this digital data. So actual instructions can be translated into the this uh, digital format, okay? And then this digital data is stored in the memory. And then it means that not accept the stored instruction, it means that just this data using address, right? And then I mentioned that, so this is very important. So you need to understand the, this concept, the concept of programming counter, okay? So this is the programming counter, and then actually this is an address for target instruction, okay? So if we set PC as the 10144, this example, then processor can read this data, uh, uh, this machine code from memory, because this is the address of the, this data, right? Then, Processor can execute instruction, this instruction. And then the PC is changing, then, and then usually if there is no jump or branch instruction, then the PC is incremented by four because the size of this data is four bytes. So, 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 it is. so usually the PC is incremented by four. Then next is the processor can read next instruction from the memory, and then this instruction can be executed. So this is what we learned in the previous class. So we learned how the highlighter language code is translated into machine code using compiler. So in the lab, lab assignment number one, so so you need to you are you are requested to Install a uh, risk five uh, cross compiler, and then using this compiler, you can uh, compile your high level language code, the uh, actual C code. And then, if you compile this C code, then you can generate assembly code and machine code, right? So, and then actually, this machine code is called a binary file. And then, this is the executable file, right? And then we can execute this executable file. Okay, that's what we learned. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's then uh, let's see the some impact of compiler. Okay, so and then now so we will dive into the detailed uh, structure of this file instruction. Okay, so let's see the impact of compiler optimization. So so if you see the uh, lab, assignment, lab assignment number one, then you can find that risk five cross compiler uh, has some compile options, right? So if you see the uh, this lab assignment document, you can find the minus uppercase O and zero. This is zero, and this is uppercase O. So actually, using this option, uppercase, if we use the uppercase O and then number, then we can set the optimization level for this GCC compiler. 
So uh, in the left assignment, we use the optimization level zero. So which means there is no optimization is uh, applied to our code. So it is because so actually if we set O1, so this is the optimization level one, then actually the compiler does not generate the assembly code. So it is because actually our, our C code does not uh, do anything. So it is because the final result is not displayed also, but just the final result is stored in the memory. So it means that actually this final result is not used. Okay, so that's why if we set the optimization level one and compiler does not generate any assembly code actually, because we do not see any output using uh, output of the is high level example high level code. Okay, that's why we set the optimization level zero for our ops, uh, assignment. But uh, if we set the uh, default optimization level for the uh, this is the compiler, then we can generate the uh, more optimized code. So let's see the this example, and then this example shows the relative performance. So it means that so we set the so this is the no optimization okay so none so we set the performance of no optimization uh, version as one and then we just compare the uh, performance of other uh, optimization level okay so and then you can you can find that relative performance is increased included actually included so, so which means that we can, if we set O1 for the GCC compiler, then the performance is improved by around 2.4 times, okay, compared to the now optimization level version. And then O2 and O3, so the performance is also improved. So it means that the, actually the code is the same. So the high level code is the same, but based on the compilers, compilers optimization level, the performance, the performance is changing. Okay, that's why compiler is also critical. Compilers are also critical for the performance of control systems. Okay. Then let's see why why the performance is. Improved. So if we see the clock cycles, so actually the clock cycle, so you know, is hardware is the same, okay? So the hardware is the same, so which means that the clock frequency is the same. So which means that clock cycle, so the number of clock cycles is the inverse of performance, right? So, so obviously, if the, the clock cycles are Decreased, okay, because this the class cycle number of class cycle is the inverse of this relative performance. That's why. Let's see the instruction count. So, what is the execution time? What is the equation of execution time? So, execution time is instruction count multiplied by CPI. Right? CPI and multiplied by PC. It's a clock period. So, which means that, you know, the performance is the inverse of execution time, right? So, which means these factors, instruction count and CPI, so these factors are critical. So, this is actually the same because so we know the uh, so it is software on the same hardware. So it means that the TT is the same. But we need to then in order to uh, analyze why the performance is improved, then we need to check the instruction count and CPI, right? Because the performance is directly influenced by these two factors. So let's see the uh, instruction count. So we can observe that. So if we use the optimization level one, then oh, instruction count is 
automatically increased. So what does that mean? So actually, so this is so it's that's why. So so as you can see, the same high level language code is compiled for Pentium 4. So this is the x86 architecture. Okay. And then as I mentioned, the x86 is the same high IHA, the complex instruction set computer. Okay, simple. So actually, x86 includes many complex instructions. And then these complex instructions are supported by hardware. So which means if we set the uh, some uh, high, high level optimization option, then the compiler can use more complex instructions to reduce the number of instructions. Okay. So, so as you can see, the instruction count is dramatically decreased. Then let's see the CPI. So we can we can find that the CPI is increased actually. So it is because, as I mentioned, the compiler will use more complex instructions, and then complex instructions will take more cycles. So even though the CPI is increased, if the CPI is increased, huh, good for the performance, right? For the execution time is proportional to the CPI. But even though the CPI is increased, instruction count is dramatically decreased. Okay, that's why if we use the high le higher level optimization option using compiler, then we may not always we may improve the performance of our code. Okay. So, so this result uh, uh show that the compiler compiler option influences the performance of our software. Also let's see another uh factors problem languages and algorithm. So this graph shows the 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 bubble sort algorithm. So this is the very basic uh, sorting algorithm. And then if we set the different optimization level, so uh, then O1, O2, and O3, then the performance can be improved. Okay. And then the source code is written in C. But if we use Java, okay, so Java, and then actually we can use the two different versions of Java. So first version that we can use the Java virtual machine, okay? And then we can use Java uh, just in time compiler. So Java works like this. this. This is the hardware, okay? And then on the hardware, there is a Java virtual machine, JVM. And then if the, the Java program is compiled, Java generates the uh, byte machine code, Java byte machine, machine code. But this machine code is the same. And then this machine code is interpreted by Java virtual machine based on the underneath hardware architecture. So we can use the x86 or ARM architecture, but this Java uh, by, by machine code is the same. Java virtual machine just interpret the this might code in the different instruction for the target hardware. That's how Java is working. So we can, but Java also can generate the, some uh, native machine code. Okay, so this native machine code can be directly run on the hardware without Java virtual machine. So there are different, um, uh, working uh, method. So then let's see the, uh, let's compare the performance of this bubble source code. So if we, so 
If we use the Java virtual machine, then we can find that our oh, performance agent also dramatically increased. And then, oh, it's obvious, it is because the machine code, so this is the byte the machine code, the machine code is, is also translated by virtual machine. So this is so clear. So because the this byte machine code needs to be translated, then the performance can be degraded. Okay. But if the if we use the native uh, machine code uh, compiled by Java just in time compiler, then you can notice that oh the performance is nearly the same to the optimized compiled code. So it means programming languages. Programming languages also influence the performance of our software. So for example, Python, Python is the kind of different type of language, the interpreter language, but Python is, so you need to know that a Python is around a thousand times slower than C. So it is because the Python is a very high level language, also Python is the interpreter or language, so that's why Python is extremely slow. So, Program and MPG also influences the performance of software or computer system. Also, if we change the algorithm, and obviously, so this is the quick sort algorithm, the performance of a quick sort algorithm, then we can also improve the performance, right? So the last graph shows the performance by quick sort compared to bubble sort. So as you can see, the peak. So we can uh, observe that the performance is uh, 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 higher than uh, 2,500 times uh, improved. Okay. So if algorithm is less improved, then the performance is also improved. But interesting thing is that if we use the kick sort and then if we apply the, some different optimization level, then the difference. So difference by this non-optimized version is reduced. So if the algorithm is changed, then the compiler, compiler optimization technique can influence the different uh, level of improvement. Okay. And then so interestingly, if so for the quick sort algorithm, if we use the Java just in time compiler, the performance is lower than the non-optimized non-optimized version of C code. So it's very interesting. So from this uh, result, we can learn that oh compiler, compiler optimization is also very critical the performance of for our software, okay? But sometimes the sensitivity, sensitivity of compiler is also changed by algorithm, okay? So as you can see, uh, so there you can find the, the default trend by the compiler optimization level. Okay. And then sometimes the program language also influence the performance of our software. But this is also an important lesson. Nothing can fix a dumb algorithm. Okay, the algorithm is actually so very critical. So that's why we need to develop a uh, fancy and good algorithm to improve the performance of our software. So we can. Uh, you can find that the uh, actually the instruction count and CPI also influence the performance of our software for this. So in this case, we need to check the both factors, okay? Instruction count and CPI. So this is uh, some impact from from compiler. 
to n uh, <coughs> let Next time is not the detail of the detail structure book with five instructions. And then based on the, this detail architecture book with five, then you can find how you can find how instruction set architecture is designed. Okay. Okay. So these are ISA design principles. Then you can read uh, the whole principle, but uh, and then we will we will check the this design principle and while we are learning about the structure and architecture of this five instruction. Okay. Then and firstly, let's see the arithmetic instruction. So what are arithmetic instructions? So arithmetic. So, and then what are arithmetic operations? It's very simple, right? Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So these are arithmetic operations. And then that actually computers can do numbers, huh? right? Okay. So it means that actually the computer needs to support arithmetic instruction. And then estimate instruction perform arithmetic operation. Then, how can we perform arithmetic operation in real world? It's very simple, right? Like the one plus two equals three, right? So, if we perform arithmetic operations like this, then we actually we require what is this? Is it operator? Is operator right? And then we require what are these? This is a operons. Operon. Okay. So. Surely, so in the real world also, so in order to perform uh, arithmetic operations, we require operator and then input operons and output operons, right? And then based on the this structure, then we can generate the computer instruction, uh, actually the risk by instruction, like this, okay? So in this example, uh, this operator, the plus operator, so add operator, add operator requires two input operands and the input operands are called sources. Okay, sources. So we require this uh, add operation requires two sources, and then this is the result. Result is called destination. So. And then if the operation is performed, the result is generated. So it means that oh, this instruction requires one destination operon. Okay. So we can represent the, this instruction like this, like add. So this is called memory. So it is the name of operator so, or identifier of operation. It's a called memory. Find the here the money, and then this is the destination. So A is the destination, and then B and C are two sources. Okay, then like for this uh, real world operation, and we can also define the computer instruction instruction like this. Okay. And then important thing is that all arithmetic operations have the same form, this form. Okay, so for example, uh, solve. Solve, solve, solve instruction that more than subtraction. Okay, and then actually the solve instruction also require two source operands and one destination operand. So have the same form. 
So this approach uh, shows the design principle number one in the simplicity famous regularity. Okay? So actually we need to we need to make simple instruction format. So is it because if we just use a simple instruction, then we can build simpler hardware. And then if we can build simpler hardware, the hardware could be automated, but the important thing is that the hardware speed, the hardware speed can be also increased. Okay, because the hardware is simple. So it's the same. If the system is compressed, then this system can be low. But if the system is slow and simple, then the system can be fast, right? So if we can build the simpler hardware, then it should good for the performance and cost. So that's why we need to build the simpler hardware. And then simpler hardware is uh, caused by simpler, uh, simple instruction, simple instruction format. And then in order to generate, the, in order to build a simple instruction, then we need, to, we need to set regular instruction forms. Okay, that's why the simplicity favors regularity. Okay, so let's see about this, uh, the different uh, arithmetic instruction. So this is the C code A equal B plus C. Okay, it's very simple, right? And then I will really easily understand the, uh, the C code. Then the C code can be translated into risk five assembly code like A, A comma, B comma, C. So as I mentioned, this A. So this is A to represent the, or this is the add instruction and then this is called mnemonic okay so mnemonic so you can think that oh mnemonic is the name of an instruction okay so this is the add instruction and then so this is a equal p plus c so actually this add operation requires three components so as you can see after the, this add, in, add mnemonic, so this is instruction, you can find the three opponents A, comma, B, comma, C. So which means that, oh, this is the, 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 the instruction required three opponents A, B, D. And then the meaning of this instruction is A equal B plus C. Okay. BC is the source of runs, and A is the destination of runs. Okay, so this is the uh, typical uh, the format of typical arithmetic instruction. So as I mentioned, so you can also imagine sub instruction, sub instruction. So like in the C code, this is the A equal B minus C, and then. You can find that oh, just mnemonic is changing. Okay, instead of a and then you can use the so it means the oh this is subtraction operation, right? But as you can see, oh this sub instruction also requires three components. So format is the same, right? The format is the length. So just this mnemonic part is changed, but the format of instruction are the same. Okay, so this represents the A. So this is destination and then B minus C. There are two sources of problems. So you can then you can imagine multiply operation or multiply instruction. How? So something like this ball, so multiply means the multiply, and then multiply also requires three of us, like A comma B comma C. Okay, three of us. So it means 
a equal b multiplied by b. So the same type of means function, it is an arithmetic means function, the same type of instruction exceeded the same or similar format. Okay. So when the instructions are designed, the instruction set architecture is designed, if the if we use the same type of instruction, like this is an arithmetic type instruction, then we can design the same format. So these instructions exhibit the same instruction format like this. Okay. And if we use the divider, then we can put as a divide a comma c comma c. Right. So so as I mentioned this is the design principle number one, the uh, so regularity. It's a regular execution. So, so the instruction format uh, exhibit the, the regular format, and then, and then for the arithmetic instruction, the instructions require three operands, and then two sorts of operands, and one estimation operand. So, what is the benefit? So, as I mentioned, so we can design simpler hardware. Okay. So easier to encode and handle in hardware. Okay. So, but in a high-level language code, we can also uh, think about uh, some more complex arithmetic operations, such like this: a equal b plus c minus d. So, in this example, we can find that oh. In, in the, this line, the one line of the six code require three sources, right? And then one destination, so the source is A. Okay. But we learn, so actually the arithmetic instructions of five have two sources and one destination. So in this case, we need to use two, two instructions. Okay, so we can rewrite the C code like the uh, P is a temporary P equal B plus C and then A equal P minus T, right? It's a P, P, okay? So this, you can rewrite the, this one line command, so one line statement to two line statement. Okay. And then, so as you can see, this line uh, has two sources. So it means, oh, we can translate the, this is the add instruction. Like this, add p comma b comma c. And then the next line can be translated in the third instruction. Okay. A comma p comma d. So, in the high-level language code, we can so we can use uh, any type of uh, operations, okay? And then the operation may include the different number of operands. But in this, uh, and, and then but the risk five instruction for the arithmetic instruction, arithmetic instructions can only have two source operands and one is destination operand. So in this case, we need to use multiple risk five instruction, obviously, right? But another example is the zip high instruction. Okay, so for example, we can think about the A equal P plus C plus D. And then using the risk type instruction like risk five, can we we learn, just learn that oh in order to translate this high level language code in risk five assembly code, then we require two risk five instruction, right? But we can imagine different type of instruction such as add three, 
and then all of its edges three has has three source edges, source components like the a comma b comma c c comma d. Okay. So actually, C type instruction like x86. C type instruction may support the more complex format of instruction such as C. Oh, OB1. So how do you make the process of three source of words? Okay. Actually, if, if, if we use the more complex instruction, this one line of this statement can be translated into the one line of one instruction, right? One instruction. So what is the benefit? We can reduce the instruction count, right? In this case, right? Because the and then so we can reduce the instruction count. It it may good it may be good for the performance because execution time is proportional to the instruction count. So six type six type computers may support the more complex instruction, but for the risk type uh, computer, risk type ISA just support the very simple and smaller number of instruction. So actually, the risk five does not support the x three. Okay, so it may be supported by the x eighty, but this five does not support some this complex instruction. So which means if the this 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 statement require uh, more source of run, then we need to use more instructions for this type either. Okay. So as I mentioned, this five group on simple and then commonly used. Okay. And then commonly used instruction. So it is so. It means actually the operator like the a equal a plus b and then c equal c plus e. So if we analyze the our high level language code, we can more frequently find the simpler operations. And, and then this simpler, the, this arithmetic operation will require two source registers only. So risk five does support the is simple operations using simple and fewer number of instructions. Okay, simple instruction. And what's the benefit? If we if we just uh, support only simpler instruction, then we can design simpler hardware. Okay, so which means we can also improve the, improve the performance of this simpler. Hardware. So that is the benefit of simpler instruction. And risk risk five just flow uh, just follow this principle. Okay, make the common case best. Okay, but other instructions such as if the x six as I mentioned, it's the sixth type arena. So x six may support the more complex instruction. Okay, so design policy is a little bit different. Okay, so we see the some basic, the basic format of arithmetic instructions of a risk five. Then let's see the next love about the operon of instruction. What does that mean? So as it actually when I mentioned about the instruction or risk five instructions, then you can find the oh, Actually, these are operands. Okay. But I said so we now we will learn about the operands of instruction. Okay. So it means so actually the risk five instruction does not follow this type of format, okay? 
So actually, so this five instruction use the different operands. Okay. So firstly, we will learn about the registers and immediates. Okay. Okay. So I believe uh, everyone knows about the operands because I already explained about the operands. Okay. Like one equal two plus three. So this is operator. And then these are operands. So operands are data used by operations, right? So the operands are actually the data. Then this data, this data needs to be stored for certain parts of hardware components, right? We cannot use data without any or hardware components. Okay. So actually the data is data is stored for certain components of the hardware and then this data is read by some other components and then so we can perform the required operation. Okay. Then risk file or some other items are just to use the three types of operands. Registers, memory, and constants. And then these constants are called immediate, okay? And then we frequently use the I and M for the immediate type data. So actually the list five instructions use these three different types of components, the registers, memory, and constants. Okay. Then the first link, let's see about the register. Okay. So we just learned about the arithmetic instruction. And then actually these arithmetic instruction use registers the register as their operand then what are registers what is register so if you see the next page you can find the definition of register the register okay so i also highlight the, some main features of main features of a register which so actually register is the, the hardware that can store data. But this register is quickly accessible. accessible. So as you can see, this register is quickly accessible. So which means oh, it's very fast. Okay, we can quickly read and write data to register one thing. We can read quickly read data from registers. Okay, so it's the first feature. It's a quickly accessible. And then it's a small amount of fast storage. But the size is very, very small. So it's actually in the, in the hardware, smaller, smaller is faster. Okay. The problem is that if we move the large Storage component, okay, or well, large memory, then this memory is very, very slow. Okay? But we want fast hardware. So that's why we use register. So the size of register is very small, but the register is very fast. So you can understand that the register is a very fast memory, but it's not it's it is different from main memory, but you can find, you can think of things like, oh, register is the storage space that can store temporary data, that this data can be quickly accessible. Okay. So this is register. So actually, you can understand the registers are data arrays. Okay, like this. So, 
uh, risk five. Risk five supports only two registers. Okay, and then each register can store binary data. So which means that oh, risk five. Risk five CPU has thirty two data arrays. Then, if the data is stored in this this array, then you can quickly access this data. So this is the register. Okay. So, and then the this the element of this data array. I think can be identified by register number. So it means that the risk five has the registers from X zero to X thirty one because there are thirty two registers. Okay. So as I mentioned, the risk five has thirty two thirty two bit. Register. Actually, this is the number of registers from X0 to X31. Then, what is this 32 bit? So, this is the size of a single register. So, what does that mean? Single A single register can score. 32 bit data. Okay. So this is the size of a single register, is the 32 bit. Okay. So and then this file has 32, 32 bit registers. Okay. Like this. And then each register is identified register number. So it is a because. As I mentioned, this story to be the size of a single register besides the story to be computer. Okay, so story to be computer means that the size, the size of a single register is 32 bit. So which means if we use 64 bit computers, then which means this computer has 64 bit register. Okay, this the uh, size of a single register is 64 bit. So which means the this computer can handle for the 64 bit address field. Okay. But in this course, we we learn about the 32 bit control system. So the register size, the size of a single register is 32 bit. Okay, the as I mentioned, tomorrow is just so register is very small. So it's a the size of single register is 32 bits, so which means it's four bytes. Okay, and then there are 32 registers. So the size of a register, the total size of registers is 32 by 4 bits, 128 bytes. Okay. Very, very small, right? With so what just 128 bytes storage. Okay. So, but why, why do we use a smaller register? Because smaller is faster. Okay. So and then uh, in the risk five or in the CPU, there are multiple registers, as I mentioned. They, they actually, uh, there, there is array of registers. So this array of registers is called register five. Okay. So register five is the group of registers. Okay. So if we just mention a single register, then we can use register. But if we just mention a group of registers, then there are 32 registers, and then this group of registers is called 
register file. Okay. So sometimes we I use the RM to represent register file. Register file. Okay. So actually, so in the previous example, so there's the end. So the, the previous example, I use the add a comma b comma c a comma b comma c a comma b comma c and then you can find that or this name of operons actually the same to the variable of c but it's not true so actually add instruction needs to use resistance as each operon okay so actually it is not true because add instruction is an element instruction needs to use register upon okay like this like this so but so you can find that oh in this example i just use the add S0, comma, S1, comma, S2. Oh, it is different from X0, X1, S2. So name is different. Why? Because for the risk of five assembly code, we can use different name for registers. Okay. So this name is called the ABI name. Okay. So actually, uh, as I mentioned, there are 32 integer type registers in this file. But actually, when these registers are uh, assigned by compiler, the compiler assign different registers for different proposals. Okay. So for example, X2. So this is the register number two of the list five. But compiler views X2 registers as stack pointer. So we learn about the stack later. But it is defined in the list five uh, manual. Then the compiler is designed compilers to okay? not most, but to use register x2 as the stack pointer and then we can use sp to represent the x register number x2 so this is the abi name and then sp is the stack pointer stack pointer sp so, so we, we can find that the default register like x5 to x7 x7 these, these are temporary registers and then for this register, we can use the T0, T1, and T2. Okay. And then for the for these registers, like the X, the X10 and X11, then we can use the A0 and A1. So we can use the different names for the so these different registers based on the forces of registers. Okay. So we can use the anything so we can use the x0 or x1 or x2 also we can use the is abi name for the risk five assembly code okay but abi name is preferred because if we just see the is abi name then we can just uh, we can just uh, estimate the proposal of Registers. Okay. Also, X0 is the special proposed register. So actually, X0 is constantly, X0 has constant zero. So, and then ABI name is also zero. So it means that actually the value of X0 is not changing. It is always zero. Okay. So, 
So that's why this register is called a zero register. Okay. So for example, we can update like the add x0 and then x1 and x2. So this means the x0 equal x1 plus x2, right? So x0 is updated by different number, okay? x1 plus x2. But even though x0 is updated like this, the output of this x0 is not changed, is already zero, okay? This is already zero, okay? So this is the special register for the list five. So we also need to remember that if the destination is x0, the x0, then nothing happens because it's not updated. Okay, sometimes the we uh, we require this this operation. Okay, sometimes. Okay, so let's see example. So instructions with the register. So this is the same C code. Okay, and then as I mentioned, when the, this C code is translated, then we can actually represent the, this instruction for this statement using the registers because as instruction of list file just use register operands okay so add instruction so it means the s0 equal s1 plus s2 and then as you can see s0 is the abi names of the register so which means it is s0 Oh, S0 is here, and then S1 is here, and then there is S2 is here. So S0 is actually X8, S1 is X9, S2 is X18. Okay. So actually, this is equivalent to the add uh, X8, X9, X18. Okay. It's equivalent. Okay. So we can represent the risk five instruction using register numbers. So we can represent the risk five instruction using ABI names. Okay. Understand? Okay, good. And then, so let's see another type of instruction. And then this instruction uses immediate data type immediate and then example is the add immediate so this mnemonic of this instruction is add i i represent the immediate so it is called add immediate okay so in a c code we frequently use the equation like this and then this equation use this small constant number. What is it? What is it? It's six. So A equal B plus C. And then we frequently, we frequently use small constant number in our code. Right, at the A plus plus. It means A equal A plus one. A plus, A equal A plus two. Actually, we frequently use small constant number but so in the program you know to use a variable like a equal one okay so it means that a variable is declared in c and then constant number one is stored in this variable right actually and the, this statement is Translated constant constant number one need to be stored stored in memory. Okay, so when we learn the, how the program is translated, constant number is also stored in the memory, right? So one need to be stored in the memory, and then in order to use this a, then this. This number needs to be transferred to the registers. Okay. So, like, so we, it means that we need to use the load instruction. So, we learn about the load instruction later. So, 
we need to use another instruction to transfer data from memory to register. And we then we need to use we need to can execute add instruction. Right. So just you know just to use just small constant number. This small constant number needs to be put in the memory and then needs to be read from memory and then then this data is used for execution. Finally, problem is the instruction is wasted. Also, the computer waste cycle to execute instruction, which is not good for the performance of our computer system. Right? So in this case, we can just instead of those four is small constant number in the memory then we just we can just store this small constant number in the instruction format so as, as i mentioned so in order to store this small constant number in the memory we can store this small constant number in the instruction format okay and what's the benefit so this is the add i instruction this add i instruction also you use it three of ones so this is the destination this is destination and then these are source sources okay sources but you can find that one of the sources is this is the register and then another source is the just constant, right? So it's a six. So instead of using registers, then we can directly use small constant number the instruction. Then in order to use the, this instruction, we need to use the add i instead of add instruction. So as I mentioned, the add instruction can only use register operands, but in order to use the immediate instruction, then we need to use the add i, add immediate. Then, in this add i, add I instruction can only use the one immediate number, okay, in the instruction. So, what is the benefit? Instead of using multiple instruction, we can just use the only one instruction, okay? At the S0, S1, and 6. And then it represents the S0 equal S1 plus 6, okay? And then S0 is storing the, var the value of the variable A, so S1 is as the value of variable, variable B. And then six is six. So this is the immediate operands. So, but it's not allowed to use the two immediate operands. And I as zero one comma two. This is not allowed. This is not supported by the file. We can just use the only one immediate number in the instruction immediate instruction. Okay. So, what are immediate operands? It's a constant data, a constant number, which is small constant number. Small constant number specified in on instruction. So it is included in the instruction format. Okay. So for example, there is the instruction here. Oh. So you can find the add i instruction here, right? The add i, sp, sp, and minus 15. And then as you can see, machine code for this instruction is this. Okay, it's a 32-bit instruction. The size of this instruction is 32-bit. So, you know, 
What line of risk five assembly instruction is translated to the solid to bit machine code instruction? This is the same to the other instruction. So it means for minus 16, it's a, it's a small constant number, immediate number is included in the this machine code. Okay. And then the computer can execute the this AI instruction using the this small constant number minus 16. So this is the immediate data. Okay. So we can use the immediate instruction. And then why do we use the immediate instruction? So as I mentioned, we frequently use small constant number to highlight the digit code. Okay, then that if the instruction supports the this type of statement, and then if we just use the if we if, if we can implement this high level statement using fewer number of instructions, then we can reduce the instruction count, right? And then if we can reduce the instruction count, then we can improve the homeworks, right? So execution time is the IC, instruction count multiplied by CPI, blah, blah, blah. So make the common case fast. This is the common case, the frequently found is, uh, frequently found in the high level of this code. And then if we can accelerate the frequently found code, then we can improve the performance of uh, our application. Okay, so this is the immediate type data. And then memory of run. So, so until this point, we learned about the first register file. And what are register, registers? Registers is the small and fast data. Okay, and then immediate. Immediate data type and then immediate data type can be stored in the instruction format. Okay, actually, actually in the immediate type data is encoded in the instruction, the machine code. Then, third operand is the memory operand. So, what are the advantages of? Registers and then immediate operands. What are these advantages? So as I mentioned, it's small. So registers are very fast, but the size is very small. And then immediate time, we can just use the small constant number, the small constant. So the problem is that we cannot store large amount of data in registers. So we cannot store large numbers or large data in immediate data. Okay, so immediate field actually, immediate field in instruction. So which means we require large memory space. This, this is called memory. So it's memory, okay? And then in the computer system, we use DRAM as the, DRAM is the main memory. So which means our data, our data is actually stored in this DRAM, its main memory, okay? So, we cannot use, we cannot use large amount of data only using registers or immediate data. So as I mentioned, the registers are very small, and then also in the immediate field, we can just use small constant number. So we require the large sized memory space, okay? So actually the most data is stored in memory, okay? So the instructions are stored in memory. Okay. So it means that so we, we can we 
because most of the most data is in memory, but oh, the arithmetic instruction like add x1, x2, x3. The arithmetic instructions can only handle the registers. The problem is that oh, our data is here. Then in order to use this arithmetic instruction, this data needs to be transferred. So it, it is the data in memory needs to be transferred to the registers. Okay, first, and then the result is in the register. The result is stored in the registers. So which means that actually this result exists in registers. Okay, then our data is here. In order to update the data in memory, is the data in registers need to be moved to the memory. Okay, do you understand? So actually, we require these two operations. The first operation is to read data from memory, and this data is stored in registers. So data is transferred from memory to register. And then this operation is called load, L-O-A-D, so load. And as I mentioned, this arithmetic instruction can update on the register. So it means that oh, our data is here. Our data, data is not updated by this instruction. So it means the data in registers need to be transferred, transferred to the memory. And then this operation is called store. So store means that the data is read from registers, then this data is stored in the main memory. So this is the store instruction. So actually, because our data is in memory, then we require these two operations, load, in, load operation and store operation. And then in order to support for these two operations, this file also supports the load instructions and for instruction, so which means that these instructions require memory occurrence. So which means that the data in memory can be accessed by these two instructions. Okay, in the next class, we will learn about the uh, memory instruction. Okay, and then uh, so unfortunately, we will miss two classes because of uh, the holidays, and then you know, the holidays, the long holidays, and then so let's see uh, the next, the next thing, and the next thing, okay?